There are no wheelchairs in eternity. There are no broken limbs in eternity. There is no sadness in eternity. There is no abuse. God lives in eternity. He created time so I would have an address, so I would have a concept, so I would have appreciation of days. Teach me to number my days so I may know how frail I am. He created time so I wouldn't take life for granted. He created time so I would appreciate my life and your life. He created time so I would get the courage to say things to you that I wouldn't say because I'm running out of time. If I was an eternal being, I would think about it longer, maybe not say it ever because I have an eternity to think about it. But since we're running out of time, the older I get, <clears throat> the older I get, the sharper I get, the quicker I'll tell you When I was 30, I might not would tell you, but at 60, I will let you have it. <clears throat> I will let you have it and not look back to see how you felt about it because I'm running out of time. Running out of time makes you get to the point. Running out of time makes you say what needs to be said. God lives in eternity. We live in time. So God is neither coming or going. He is always here. Remember when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? And God said, I am that I am. Not I was or I will be, I am. Because he's always present. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I am in today, I can't go back to yesterday, I'm waiting on tomorrow, but God is in tomorrow while I'm in today. That's why when God gives me a word today, it can heal something that broke yesterday because he, he's not subject to dates. He can say something now that heals something that happened 20 years ago. He can speak something now that changes the outcome of something that happens 30 years from now. Because God lives in eternity, I live in time. I, wanna, I have to go deeper. See, I, if I get on this, I got to go deeper. If you read the, 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 the creation story in the book of Genesis, over and over again, you will see the word re. He restored, he replenished, he redeemed. Re is to do over again. Okay, he did it over again. He did it over again. It's been done before. Oh, wow. It's been done before. Somebody say before. See, the problem is I can't remember what was before because I am here, present now, but I can't remember what was before. When the Bible says that God redeemed us or restored us or, 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 or re-delivered us or redeemed us from the curse of the law, from sin or death, it suggests that there was something between me and him before. Before what? Before time. Okay, I'm going I'm to go, I'm a, Jeremiah's going to help me out. I got myself in trouble, but Jeremiah's going to pull me out. Jeremiah 1, 4, 5. 1, chapter 1, chapter, verse 4 and 5. Jeremiah, check this out. It's still in frame. I haven't got to the picture. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, before, 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 before. Before, 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 before your mama's ankle swole, before her belly got big, before her face broke out in a rash, and before she threw up the first morning and told her husband, baby, I'm sick. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before, before I formed you, before you had your first birthday, before you were one week old, before you were one day old, before your mama was pregnant, I knew you. Before you were born, before you were born, before you were born, I set you apart. 
I set you apart. I meant for you to be different. Before you ever even got here, I meant for you to be different. And you spent the first 20 years of your life trying to fit in. But the reason you never fit in is that I set you apart before you ever even got here. You didn't even fit in with your neighbors. You didn't fit in with your friends. Uh-oh, you don't even fit in your family. You're the, one, you're the only one in your family who thinks like you think because I set you apart before I formed you in the belly. I meant for you to be different. So don't be upset over the people who didn't like you, who thought you, thought you were cute, who didn't like your hair. I don't care how you change your hair, change your walk, change your talk. I meant for you to be an outcast, rejected, ostracized. I meant for you to be different. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, I ordained you, I set you apart. Oh my God, this is good. So he knew me in eternity past. Okay, this is eternity past. Eternity past is an oxymoron. Eternity past is an oxymoron. It is, it is two things that totally disagree with each other. Eternity can't have a past, but the eternity is my only way of describing God and past is my human attempt to express an anthropomorphic reality. An anthropomorphic reality, anthro is human, it's a human attempt to describe something that is divine. So eternity, past, present, and future, past, present, and future are human terms, eternity is God terms. Eternity, past, before I was born, he knew me. He knew me. He formed me because he knew me. I had a relationship with him before. I had a relationship with him before I met my mother. <laughs> That's why when he called me, I recognized his voice. He said, my sheep know my voice, a stranger they will not follow. That's why you go to church and get blessed and the person you went with didn't get nothing. Maybe they didn't recognize the voice. I knew the voice before I read the Bible. You know the word, but I know the voice. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. A lot of people know scripture, but they don't know the voice. He said, my sheep know my voice, a stranger they will not follow. And some kind of way, his voice resonated with me because I knew him before. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, when you were just a spirit and I was just a spirit, we knew each other. On a spiritual level, we connected, we hooked up, we got together. I agreed to send you in the time, but here's the deal. If you go in the time, you're going to forget what we had in eternity. That's what being lost is about. Being, the reason I'm lost, I, I can't be, first of all, I can't be lost if I don't belong to somebody. And I can't be lost if there's not a place for me. So the whole notion of being lost is, ju is not just about sinful activity, it's about not remembering. So, so he, he, he chose me in him before the foundations of the world. That's what the Bible said. He chose me in him, he picked me out, and then sent me in the time. Now, Thomas, I'm going to send you in the time. <clears throat> when I send you in the time, you're going to walk in the time. And the moment you come out of your mother's womb, you won't remember that you knew me before. But I set you apart. I won't lose track of you. I set you apart. And when I get ready for you, I'm going to call you. And when I call you, you're going to recognize my voice, though you don't remember what we had before. I'm going to prove this. Can I prove this to you? Okay, go to Romans 8, 29 and 30. Look at this right quick. It's just a frame. It's not the picture. 
For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be, to be, oh, this is so good. For those God, we're going backwards, foreknew, for those God before knew, those are people that God before knew, that's what foreknew means, before knew, he also, this is future, predestined. Okay, I, because I knew you before, I predestined you to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Good God Almighty. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Come on. And those he predestined, he also called. Wait a minute, go back to 29 again. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. All of that he did without me knowing it. I can't remember it. Come on. And those he predestined, he, he also, he also, he, this is what I found out. He also, 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 that's when I found out I was his. When he called me, that's when I realized that I wasn't what they called me. I wasn't what he called me. I wasn't what she called me. I was what... Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when he called me, we're having trouble with one of the screens, but when he called me, that's when I realized that's him. That's him. And because he called me, that's when I became aware of who I was before. And it doesn't matter what I was in when he called me. He called me. I could have been at a strip club, but he called me. I could have been at a gay bar, but he called me. I could have been a high on crack, but he called me. And all of a sudden, what used to make me happy doesn't make me happy anymore. And what used to give me joy doesn't give me joy anymore. Because God has a way of disrupting your life. Because he called you. When he called you, it, I like Ephesians, I didn't give you this scripture, Jermel, but I like this scripture. Ephesians 1 and 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. That's, that's what called is is to make you know the mystery of his will. You are more than what you're doing. He made known unto me the mystery of his will. I meant for you to be raised the way you were raised. I meant for you to go through the pain you went through. I meant for you to be rejected. I know it's a mystery, but all things are gonna work together for your good. I'm going to make known there's a purpose in your pain. You're not just having pain to have pain. I'm birthing something in you. I'm birthing something out of you. This is not just arbitrary pain. This is pain for a reason. I'm bringing something out of you. I'm going to show you who you really are. Because who you really are is a mystery. Who you really are is a mystery. You work with people who don't really know you. You live around people who don't really get you. You may have married somebody who didn't get you. Uh oh, we're going to get off that because you're sitting beside them. You don't want to say nothing. So just keep looking ahead and look confused. Say, huh? not even get me. I could spend a lot of energy doing something that I really wasn't predestined to do. Maybe I did it because you wanted it from me. Maybe I did it because my parents wanted it from me. Maybe I did it because my wife wanted it from me. Maybe I did it because it was easy for me. Maybe I did it because I had some talent in it but it doesn't give me fulfillment because it is not it. 
You got me? Now to my text.